Uh, this uh, uh, red mustard, it's, um, it's bolting now. It's, uh, it's time to go. It's time to start putting in the um, summer, uh, summer uh, veg. Uh, it's, fi it's filling a nice spot. I think it's quite an attractive plant. But I, sh I should be picking it. I uh, bought these um, dwarf runner runner beans from a garden centre. I planted a few. They're um, runner beans, are hestia. Um, they grow about a foot and a half tall. But uh, I'm going to pop these in the in the middle in that space for gated over there. This is all, all uh, composted. Compost. So I'm going to move most of the mulch out of the way. Come then. And then when I finish, put the um, mulch back on top. What's that? Nail. I'm going to put some uh, extra. I'm, I'm sort of using the, um, in many ways, the. Um, I'm bunching them quite close together because I want them a little bunch. I'm using in many ways the uh, square foot gardening method. So I'm keeping you know, basically a square foot, a little bunch of square foot, and uh, it creates a nice little polyculture. I'm going to put some more. Put some more dudes. You know, put some more compost on top. In, in the square foot gardening system, you put a trowel full of compost on as you replant. And I'm going to put a clock over that as well because it's it's only sort of earliest a third of the way through May. in there which um, there's no point I mean unless it's completely rotten like that so just let it rot even more on the surface but um, anything hard goes anything hard goes back
is um, sea beet. And it's very closely related to um, chard or um, perpetual spinach. Uh, this is, I think, the third or fourth year I've had it. It's a perennial. Allegedly, all the beetroot family perennials. But of course, spring comes and it bolts. So just um, just crop it like you would any um, like a kale. And just make your way up the top. I'm leaving the ones on the bottom because I want it to um, get nice big leaves at the bottom in a rosette fashion, which you can sort of encourage it to do. In a minute, I'm going to chop these stalks down. You've got a few um, feeds off this. And hopefully it will take a more classic um, sort of rosette style at the bottom once it's been stopped from um, from um, sending up a shoot. Well, as you can see from this low lying one here. It's not always the case. We're trying to rejuvenate it by cutting it down, get it to be more classic chard style rosette. It probably won't work until mid um, midsummer, but with any let's, let's give it a go. I'll also put some more compost underneath it. These leaves don't need those. As you can see it's woody at the base, uh, shows it's, it's, it's perennial, it's been going for quite a while. Uh, these are cardoons, the um, Italian ones which an Italian friend gave to me for eating purposes. I shall um, I've got some flowering um, alliums underneath, so I want um, uh, to cut, the, cut these back and eat them for uh, make a bit of, bit of light for the alliums. So that's uh, there's good eating on one of those. Um, just peel back these um, ribs, um, cut back the leaves, and cut it into strips uh, and boil it. And then you can put them into tasty stews or batter them or whatever. There's a lot of eating on it. It's slightly bitter. Some people won't like it, but um, I think it's a very productive vegetable. It used to be grown in this country before the First World War, I'm told. Well, people used to compete in your sort of village flower shows. Flower and veg show. The 
I made a bit of space around, uh, for this allium here. 